Okay. Got everyone here? All right. Okay, well, good morning and thank you for being here today. We are here together this morning to announce a multi-legislative effort that has one goal in mind, to save lives. Together we want to raise the tobacco tax, keep tobacco out of the hands of young people, regulate e-cigarettes and smokeless tobacco in our ballparks, and expand access to health care for low-income Californians. And before I get started, I just want to recognize and thank the authors of these important pieces of legislation. And I'm honored to be working on this legislative package with the chair of the Senate Health Committee, Dr. Ed Hernandez. Thank you. Yay. The chair of the Senate Budget Committee, Senator Mark Leno. The chair of the Assembly Health Committee, Assemblymember Rob Bonta. And the chair of the Assembly Budget Subcommittee, one on Health and Human Services. I know that's a mouthful. Uh, Assemblymember Tony Thurman. And I'd also like to take a moment to recognize the extraordinary coalition that has come together to support these bills. Doctors, nurses, healthcare professionals, unions, advocates, and patients. This group has joined together to fight big tobacco because the toll that tobacco continues to exact on people is staggering. Tobacco use is the number one cause of preventable death in the United States and around the world. Here in California, tobacco-related diseases claimed over 40,000 lives per year and cost taxpayers $18.1 billion annually, or $487 for each resident each year. I'm authoring Senate Bill 591, which will raise, which will increase the California's tobacco tax by $2 per pack. We know how to win the fight against tobacco. Raising the tobacco tax has been proven to prevent and reduce smoking, especially among young people. In fact, we know that every 10% increase in cigarette prices reduces youth smoking by 7% and total tobacco consumption by 4%. And here in California, we have one of the lowest tobacco tax rates in the country, even lower than Texas. 32 other states have higher tobacco tax rates than here in California. An increase of $2 <coughs> per pack would put California's tobacco tax rate as only eighth in the nation. And the money raised by the bill, $1.5 billion in the first year alone, will expand treatment for Medi-Cal patients with tobacco-related illnesses and support programs to, to prevent smoking. SB 591 is one piece of this very important legislative package. And before I have Assemblymember Rob Bonta speak about his legislation, I would like to bring up Laura Tyrell, a survivor, a fighter, to speak about the real, very real effects tobacco has had on her life. Laura. I would also like to thank you today for joining us with this Save Lives California Coalition as we rally to support this unprecedented package of tobacco bills. These are five critically important pieces of legislation with momentum that is picking up as we realize what a huge dent they could make in the tobacco-related challenges we face on multiple fronts here in California. My name is Laura Terrell. I'm a three-time cancer survivor. I'm a volunteer ambassador with the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. But today I'm here because I'm the daughter of two longtime smokers who paid the ultimate price. My mother and father both died from lung cancer at way too early an age. My cancers are unrelated to tobacco, but I've endured multiple rounds of chemotherapy, too many surgeries, and now I'm in a clinical trial fighting for my life against a stage four cancer. That is why it is absolutely mind-boggling to me when I see young people smoking, ignoring the risks that this has to their health and those around them. If you smoke, your chances of getting cancer increase by 30%. It isn't just about lung cancer. We now have found relationships with 14 cancer to tobacco use. 
one in three women will get cancer, and chances are even higher for you men, one in two. Who would want to increase their odds? We know almost 70% of current smokers want to quit completely, for good reason. I know how hard it was for my mom and dad to quit. And of course, by the time they did, it was too late. It has been proven over and over again that by <coughs> raising the tobacco tax, such as the $2 per pack proposed by Dr. Pan's SB 591, it's the most successful way to prevent kids from starting to smoke. Studies have shown that if we can keep them from smoking as young people, they won't smoke when they are adults. Now it's time to raise California's tobacco tax. We are only one of three states in the U.S. that has not increased that tax during this century. At 87 cents, you heard Dr. Pan say, we are lower than the majority of the states. 33rd lowest in the country, to be exact, and that is simply shameful. Smoking inflicts a huge toll on California, both in terms of public health and our economy. Revenues generated from our tobacco tax increase would directly bring down costs by reinvesting in the state's anti-smoking programs that prevent youth from smoking and providing cessation programs for the people that want to quit. Smoking rates are not dropping like they used to, in, and in some cases, as with the e-cigarettes, they're actually on the rise. There is so much at stake here. Smoking kills more people than AIDS, alcohol, murder, car accidents, suicides, and illegal drugs combined. If my parents were here today, they would be at this podium instead of me, pleading with all of you that it simply isn't worth it. Tobacco isn't worth it, and we must get behind this very important coalition called Save Lives California, and every one of these five tobacco fighting bills. If my parents were here, they would look at you and say, get on with it. Let's not lose ground. Thanks much. Good morning. I'm Rob Bonta. I'm honored to uh, serve in the California State Assembly representing the 18th Assembly District, which includes the great cities of Oakland, Alameda, and San Leandro, and also very proud to serve as the chair of the Assembly Health Committee. I want to thank all of you for being here and, and thank the Save Lives California Coalition of doctors, nurses, patients, survivors, hospitals, healthcare workers, unions, and taxpayers who have all come together today to speak with one voice and stand up for the health of Californians. In my role as the chair of the Assembly Health Committee, I'm very proud and grateful to have the opportunity to work on numerous issues that improve the lives and health of Californians. And today, I'm very proud to stand with my colleagues and allies in support of a number of bills that will curb the devastating health impacts of tobacco in California and set a new precedent for other states to follow. Cancer, heart disease, stroke, lung disease, diabetes, and other diseases related to tobacco are a significant burden on California's already overstressed healthcare system. Every year, California spends over $3.5 billion in taxpayer dollars to treat Medi-Cal patients with tobacco-related illnesses. As Dr. Pan discussed, SB 591 will increase the tobacco tax by $2. And I'm very happy to be a principal co-author on that bill, as well as to be working with Dr. Pan on a companion bill that I'm authoring, AB 1396, which will allocate those new tobacco tax revenues to several purposes. Mm -hmm. AB 1396 will, one, supplement tobacco prevention and control programs, two, ensure quality and provide access to health care programs for families and children, including an increase in Medi-Cal reimbursement rates. Three, increase compliance with tobacco tax laws and reduce underage tobacco use. And finally, backfill any losses to programs currently funded by tobacco tax revenues. I'm proud to take a strong stand with the Save Lives California Coalition to save the lives of countless Californians from the preventable and destructive consequences of tobacco use. Thank you all for being here. I'm proud to stand with you. And next, let me introduce Chair of the Senate Health Committee, 
Senator Ed Hernandez, who will talk about his SB 151. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, let me first start off by thanking the press for being here, all in the audience who are here as well, but also to take this opportunity to thank um, um, Save Lives and California Coalition as well. But take it a step further, but to also thank the members that are behind me who are committed to making a change in the state of California, um, Senator Richard Pan for his introduction of SB 591. I'd like to thank uh, the uh, assembly member Rob Bonta, and for introducing AB 1396. I haven't seen Senator, oh, he just arrived. I'd like to thank Senator Leno for introducing SB 140. And of course, Assembly Member uh, Tony Thurman for introducing AB 768. And this is a, um, a series of bills that's going to uh, affect how not only young adults, but how individuals in the state of California will be um, dealing with smoking, whether it's e-cigarettes, cigarette tax, or raising the minimum age, or as well as the um, whether they can smoke within particular ballparks, et cetera. But my bill, what it's going to do, it's going to raise, age, raise the smoking age from 18 to 21. And by raising the smoking age from 18 to 21, you're going to get less individuals or yes, less young adults addicted to nicotine, which we all know will ultimately lead to death. It will not only get less individuals addicted to nicotine, but it will also lead them f in the future to not become smokers. It will also have f less cost on our state with regard to health care costs altogether. But an estimated 90 percent of lifetime tobacco users start before the age of 21, and 80 percent start before the age of 18. Early experimentation is largely driven through legal sales. 18 and 19 year olds furnishing tobacco products to the younger teens in their social circles. This bill aims to place the age restriction above the social circle of most high school students. We can no longer afford to sit on the sidelines while big tobacco markets to our children and gets another generation of young individuals hooked on the product that will ultimately kill them. Let me say that again, that will ultimately kill them. California already has a 21-year age restriction in place for buying alcohol and purchasing certain firearms because we know those are various dangerous activities. As a poisonous and ultimately deadly product, tobacco needs to be added to that list. And that's why I introduced the bill that will increase the age from 18 to 21. So at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce my colleague in the State Senate, uh, Senator Mark Leno, who will talk about SB 140. And thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank you, Senator Hernandez. And it is a great pleasure to join all of my legislative colleagues today to address this issue, which each in our individual ways addresses a very serious health crisis and potential unfolding of a new health crisis. And that is why I'm authoring this bill with regard to e-cigarettes. All it will do, it doesn't ban them, doesn't impede innovation, it doesn't do anything other than regulate them as tobacco products. This is a very fast-growing industry and it is wholly unregulated. And we see the greatest growth in use of e-cigarettes among middle and high school students. Middle and high school students who have never smoked a cigarette are now smoking e-cigarettes. Even though it is illegal in California, thanks to the leadership of our former colleague Ellen Corbett, to sell e-cigarettes to minors, nonetheless, the industry markets flavors such as Mountain Dew, bubblegum, and other sweet, attractive flavors to children. They are ingesting nicotine. And we've seen this all before. Big Tobacco always looking for what they consider and market as a safer delivery system for their nicotine, which is addictive and deadly. We've been through this before the risk of seeing a whole new generation 
of Americans addicted to nicotine should concern everybody. The misery, the suffering, the loss of life and illness, and the huge multi-billion dollars of cost to the taxpayer to deal with all the negative health effects of nicotine. And very quickly, about a year ago, Altria, which sells Marlboro, introduced the Market 10 e-cigarette brand. It increased the concentration of nicotine by about 65 percent. Blue e-cigs increased their nicotine content by 50 percent. Enjoy, which only makes in-cigarettes, is a pharmaceutical, using a pharmaceutical ingredient in a new version of its device that's supposed to increase vapor absorption in the lung and elevate nicotine delivery to about 70 percent of a cigarette, according to their company data. Wells Fargo has researched and estimates that within 10 years, 75 percent of the e-cigarette market will be owned by big tobacco. We've been through this before. Are we going to let ourselves be fooled again? That's why we're supporting this e-cigarette regulation bill. Thank you. Great. Send the freshmen to follow all of that, right? <laughs> um, I'm Tony Thurman. It's my pleasure to represent the 15th Assembly District, the cities of Oakland, the cities of Richmond and Berkeley. Um, and it is a pleasure to stand before you with my colleagues in the Assembly and the Senate uh, who are taking these great stands today. And for those who've shared their personal stories about how they've been impacted by cancer and tobacco. Um, I want to thank the Save Lives Coalition and thank each of you for being here today. Um, my story is part personal. Uh, I lost both of my parents to cancer. Uh, neither one of them smoked cigarettes, but I can tell you, having lost both parents to cancer, it is something that I would not want to see anyone go through. Um, our bill, AB 768, makes the connection uh, to how cancer and tobacco can impact young people. Uh, specifically, it's a ban on chewing tobacco and smokeless tobacco in the major league stadiums in California, and of course there are five. We're making the case that young people are deeply impacted by seeing major leaguers chew tobacco or use other forms of smokeless tobacco. I know for a fact, again, I said it was personal. When I was a kid, I loved baseball. And when we played baseball, we tried to do the things that we saw our heroes do. We packed anything into our mouths that we could. We didn't have tobacco, but we pretended that we were chewing it and spitting it. It was messy, I'll tell you that much. Uh, but we were doing the things that we think that kids do today. And every year, 535,000 young people try chewing tobacco for the first time. And 14.7% of young people uh, you know, are, are using chewing tobacco. And we think that there is a direct link to what kids will see, and that's why we think that we should be banning smokeless tobacco. That's why we're proud to be part of this conversation. Um, we're glad that people are listening. Uh, our bill passed through its first committee yesterday, and the Arts and Entertainment Committee has passed through and is now moving on uh, to the next committee. And obviously, we're involved in the conversation to say that we think that uh, there's no place for smokeless tobacco in baseball. We're calling it the Tobacco-Free Baseball Act, and we want to continue the conversation. And we're saying that all five of the stadiums uh, for across California, for the Oakland A's, the San Francisco Giants, Los Angeles Dodgers, San Diego Padres, and the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, that there would be no uh, use of smokeless tobacco anywhere in the stadium, on the field, um, in the clubhouse, anywhere that young people might see. And we're glad uh, to be able to support uh, the bills today that you heard from Senators Leno and Hernandez and Pan and Assemblymember Bonta. And now we're all prepared to take your questions. Thank you very much. Okay, so again, I want to thank everyone for being here, and we're happy to answer any questions uh, from the press. I think uh, what's uh, different this year is is that um, one is is that we're focusing the tobacco tax on the costs that are produced by tobacco itself directly. So we are looking at uh, focusing the funds and uh, proud to be working with some of the Mbanta on this to uh, both address the uh, trying to prevent uh, t tobacco use, and that's really the, 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 the main driver, but also to help uh, mitigate the cost that tobacco have, have actually 
cost financially to the taxpayer and, of course, certainly to the health of the people who smoke. So uh, you know, we, there's a cost that taxpayers are bearing because of uh, tobacco. And I think it's uh, certainly reasonable to ask that uh, the products that have co created those health problems and incurred those costs to the state, that the, at least the, the portion of it, this, this $2 pack isn't going to cover all of it. It's only cover a fraction of it. At least some of that can be recouped. Uh, so that uh, the state can be, uh, so that it's not borne solely by the taxpayers, that, it, that, the, that the tobacco companies have to, to, have to uh, help pay for the, some of the, well, pay for some of the damage they're doing. I don't have that exact figure, though we do know that the market's growing twofold in the past three recent years to over $2 billion today. So clearly the e-cigarette folks would tell you that they're fighting big tobacco. In fact, there is every reason to believe that they're in this together because the e-cigarette folks were the innovators. They've got what big tobacco has always been looking for, their holy grail, a so-called safe delivery uh, system for their addictive drug. And so to the degree that the market can grow unregulated, the innovators will benefit when the big guys come in and buy them up. So there are great financial incentives for both sides. It is happening as we speak, and according to Wells Fargo, 75% of it within 10 years will all be in big tobacco's hands. The, oh, sure. So the common uh, parlance is vapors, uh, vaporizing. It comes from vapor vaporization. The suggestion is that the emission is just vapor. What comes to your mind? Just water droplets. Uh, it's not vapor, it's aerosol. And the difference is aerosol is made up of particles. And the California Public, uh, Department of Public Health has identified 10 carcinogenic particles in the emissions coming from these vaping devices. 10 chemicals that are listed on our Prop 65 list of dangerous chemicals. And that is why we think again, that these products should be regulated as tobacco products because the secondhand effects are just as serious when nicotine is burned as when it is heated or vaporized. Any other questions? Uh, yes. Yes. So if the, you know, if those three years between 18 and 21 are not where, you know, a lot of people are first starting smoking, then, you know, what is the thinking behind why that raising the age to 21 is going to make a significant difference? Well, there was a recent study that was just produced by the Institution of Medicine that looked at 19, 21, and 25, and the study showed that age 21 was the most efficient or the best age which would reduce the number of individuals that would be addicted to nicotine. Also, if you are 16 or 17, you are more likely to have somebody purchase illegal cigarettes for them because they know somebody who is 18. So if somebody, if we raised it to 21, that 15, 16, 17 year old, that social sphere is going to be reduced significantly and a 21 year old is less likely to purchase the uh, cigarette for them. It's also been uh, noted that if the younger you start, uh, the brain development has a higher tendency to be addicted to nicotine, and therefore if you start at a younger age, therefore you're going to be most likely a lifetime smoker. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Uh, baseball, sure. Though. Yes. Have you guys heard? Um, 
We, uh, we reached out to uh, the Players Association. We said we'd come to spring training and talk about it. We didn't get invited, but, uh, <laughs> but we've reached out nonetheless. Look, um, you know, baseball lost uh, a, a baseball champion last year in Tony Gwynn, who at the age of 54 uh, died from salivary gland cancer. And he was pretty vocal that uh, his diagnosis was due from his use of chewing tobacco. Uh, Kurt Schilling, um, World Series pitcher, who has been diagnosed with oral cancer, talked about 30 years of chewing tobacco as being the reason why he has oral cancer. So there's a clear connection. Uh, we've reached out to the Players Association. We're in conversation with them about it. Um, Major League Baseball has said that they would support a ban on baseball, but we've reached out to the players. We think that, um, you know, it's a fact that smokeless tobacco and chewing tobacco can cause all kinds of cancer, oral cancer, esophageal cancer, other forms of cancer. Um, and it's a fact that kids do what their heroes do. And so we're making that connection uh, directly with the Players Association, with Major League Baseball. We're willing to talk to anybody, um, but we want to make sure that people don't uh, avoid the facts, uh, that there is a direct cause to cancer from use of chewing tobacco and smokeless tobacco. And we don't think that kids should see that and, and, and develop that habit. Have you gotten the players to be in the face of this legislation? Uh, we've had some players who are retired speak in favor. Um, you know, we've been invited on a lot of, um, you know, interviews, radio interviews, and you can imagine we've heard the gamut of, uh, of conversation, but generally no one can uh, deny the fact that when you say that 500,000 young people between the ages of 12 and 17 every year try smokeless tobacco, um, it's irrefutable. Um, when we've had the chance to talk to young people, we uh, had some uh, future major leaguers as young as age 10 talk about how much they look up to their baseball heroes and they don't want to develop the habit of chewing tobacco. We know that it's just an irrefutable fact that there's a connection. No one has been able to refute um, that this is a good thing. To, to keep kids from developing cancer is a good thing and that's the lane that we're staying in and uh, we're going to keep pushing and we'll talk to everybody and uh, as I say we're engaged in conversation with both uh, Major League Baseball and the Players Association on that front. Thank you. 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 Thank you.